A few days back, I saw this video from Polyfjord Deep Dive. Essentially, Google released a new AI model that lets you record your screen and give the instructions live for what the AI should do. So what he did is made the AI control Blender only using his voice. This gave me an idea. Why don't I try to do this with Manim? Essentially, it's a Python library that I use to create animations for my videos. They look super clean. For example, the monitor visual. If I want, I can run this code and it's going to output an animation animation that looks like this. So I want to try and see how good this AI is at creating these animations, because if I could control it only with my voice, that would be sick. So I have a blank Python file here, and then also the AI window open. I want to first create a rectangle and then make it turn into a circle only using code. This should be very simple to do. So let's see, share your screen. Hello, can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. It looks like you have a code editor open on the left side and the stream real-time interface on the right side. I have an empty Python file open on the left side and I want to create an animation using a Python library called Manim inside the file. Would you be able to create an animation showing a square on the screen? Sure, I can help with that. You want to create a simple animation of a square appearing on the screen using the Manim library in Python, correct? Yes. Okay, here's the code for creating that animation. Python from Manim import class square on screen. Could you show me that code as text instead of saying it to me? Okay, I will display the code as text instead of speaking it. Here it is. Python from Manim import. Okay, not what I expected. There's an output format here. I should have chosen text. And also in the video that I mentioned, this person used some kind of prompt to tell AI to always output code. I'm going to yoink all of this. Very nice. And here are system instructions. So I'll put it here. Okay, so I've tweaked these system instructions a bit to apply to Manim instead of Blender. Let's try this now. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. It appears to be completely black. Okay, so it doesn't see my screen. Oh, I don't think I can give it system instructions. If I want to share my screen, it only works when it doesn't see my screen, but I can still talk to it. And also here in the output format, I can choose text. So now instead of answering, it's going to talk to me via text. So let's maybe try without sharing the screen. Create a Manim animation that would put a rectangle on the screen. Okay, here we go. Paste it here and let's run the code. Oh, it worked. Okay, let me put this here at the bottom. Now make this rectangle red and then make it transform into a green circle. Copy this. There's the rectangle and it doesn't transform into a circle. Although by looking at this, it should have transformed. Oh, it named the scene something different. So now it's playing the previous animation. Okay, now it should work. There's the red rectangle and it turns into a circle. Ooh, make the circle smaller and the rectangle bigger and also make the rectangle filled in. So it should have a fill opacity of 0.5. Okay, I don't think it renamed the scene this time. So let's run this again. There's a bigger rectangle and it turns into a circle. Okay. Okay, now create another animation showing a parabola on the screen. Let's see if this works. It should have created an axis. Ooh, function graph. No idea what that is, but it might still work. Oh, there is a parabola. I didn't even know such a thing as function graph existed. I want to also show this parabola on top of axes. Could you create the axes and also put them on the screen? Okay, it changed the class name once again. So the name of the animation changes. Let's do show axes and parabola. Oh, it works. Could you put labels on these axes? Copy to clipboard. Let's see. Oh, there are no labels. Oh, it changed the scene name once again. Okay, so let's run this one. There are now labels. Okay. Now, could you show the derivative of this function changing over time? I have no idea how to do this myself. So if it does it, that's very impressive. And... I want to show the derivative of each point on the parabola changing as the point is moving alongside the parabola. Could you make that animation? Oh, something went wrong. Clear chat and start new stream. Okay, let's completely restart this. I want to create a Manim animation on the screen showing a parabola on an axis. Those axes should have axis labels and the parabola should be red. I also want to show a point on the parabola and as the point is moving along the parabola, I want there to be a derivative for that point shown on the screen. Not sure if I understood what I even said there, so let's see how it does. Okay, wait, let's make it bigger. It seems like it got the axes, there's the parabola, and there's the derivative. Okay, so it's very similar to how it was before. I want to show the derivative of this parabola changing as a point goes across the entire parabola. Could you do that? Okay, it split my message in two for some reason. Okay, there's the parabola. 
<gasps> it actually did it from those weird instructions. I didn't even know how to say this. And there's no way I would have created this myself. <sighs> Oh, it's called a tangent line. Whoops. So there's close relationship between derivatives and tangent lines. However, they're not the same thing. For starters, the derivative is a function, while the tangent line is, well, a line. Instead, the correct statement is this. The derivative measures the slope of the tangent lines. Oh. I want to do the same, but instead of a derivative, I want there to be a tangent line on the parabola. So I was kind of aiming in the right direction. Okay, 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 this is really good. And this time, let's make something really stupid. But for this, I want to use this app called Tiny Task. I saw this in that Blender video as well. It should essentially let me record my screen and then I can play the recording and it will repeat the exact same actions that my cursor did on the screen. So essentially I can record copying and pasting the code here so I don't have to do all of this manual work. Let's try downloading this. Oh, so let's start without this app for now. Create three red circles on the screen and stack them vertically on top of each other. So I click this and scroll down, then click clicked copy to clipboard, went here, pasted it in, ran Python file, and there are the circles. Okay, so essentially I want to record myself doing this task. Make these circles stacked horizontally. Now I pause this, click record, go here, slightly scroll up, copy, go here, control A, paste, and say run Python file, then come here and click the top one, and then stop. So now the next time I click play, my cursor should do the exact same thing. And can I maybe increase the speed? So it will do it at 2x speed. Okay, here we go. Transform the first circle into a triangle, the second circle into an octagon, and the third circle into a square. Now let's click play. Oh, my mouse cursor is doing stuff without me. <laughs> This is so cool. Cannot access local variable triangle where it's not associated with a value. Not sure why the triangle isn't working. Whoa, what are these slashes? What if I delete them? Oh, okay, it works, but it doesn't work. Make sure that the triangle, octagon, and square stay in the same places as those circles that they transform from. This time, I think I want 100 times speed. Let's see what happens. Whoop. Oh. Oh, just like that. And it works. Damn. Okay, I need to re-record it again so that I scroll down as soon as it outputs something. Create a new animation where there are 100 circles on the screen. The circles should have a fill opacity of 1 and a sheen factor of minus 0.2. Five. Okay, I recorded the new action, so it now should happen instantly. Now move all of these circles to the edges of the screen in a way that they make up an empty rectangle in the center of the screen. Play. I'm not sure if anything's happening. I don't think it copied the code. Okay, so my previous recording was better. Whoa, that's weird. I guess you could definitely interpret that from my description. But look at this code. This would have taken me so long to write. That's crazy. This time, instead of saying the instructions out loud, I decided to write them down. And I'm going to make another recording. This is just crazy that AI can just do this and I can tell it what... Whoa, those weren't the instructions, but this looks insanely cool. It now forms a circle in the center of the screen, but I want it to form a rectangle. Let's try to play this. Oh, it's still a circle. Now the circles are forming a circle in the center of the screen, but I want them to form an empty square. And does it work? Wow, doesn't work. I don't think I'm recording my actions that well, because this time it didn't copy the right thing. This was the right thing. But it's very cool to see my cursor flying around. I need to work more on perfecting this so that it works every single time. Whoa, exactly what I needed. How insane does that look? I would have never created this myself. Now make it become the shape of a triangle instead of a square. Oh, what just happened? <laughs> Doesn't look like a triangle. Create an entirely new animation. It should be a 3D scene. In that scene, there should be a bunch of cylinders that make up a shape of a cube. Okay, copy and play. Wow, it looks like a time lapse. That's crazy. There are three loops within loops. Definitely would have come up with this myself. What is even all this? If it actually gets it and makes this animation, I'm going to be really impressed. Well, I'm impressed already. So it can fail miserably as well. Oh, oh, cylinders. That's not what I meant. Instead of cylinders, I meant spheres. Instead of cylinders, make them spheres. Here we go, replay. This is the coolest part. Just pew, 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 pew. There we go, it's doing it. Oh, this is exactly what I wanted to make. That's crazy. Could you make the spheres slightly smaller and more spaced out? Copy to clipboard, play. 
boom, there it is. It's creating the animation. By the way, if you want to learn how to make these animations, the basics of it, actually the very basics of it, you don't even need to know how to code. I have a beginner's course about it. These animations look super clean and creating them is very satisfying when you succeed. And also they make YouTube videos look super cool and unique. I'll leave a link to the course in the description. Oh, something went wrong. Ooh, so I need to clear and start a new stream. Okay. What if I say this is the current animation that I'm working with? Could you make the spheres red and could you make the entire screen rotate around all of the spheres in the center for five seconds boom it's making the animation how cool is that oh my computer is struggling it's only done one percent of the animation it's been 64 years. I'm not sure why it's struggling for so long. Maybe because I decided to rotate the camera and there are many spheres that need to be rendered any second now. Oh, it's now 70%. So where's the animation? Oh. oh, okay, this took way too long to render, but let's just admire how cool this looks. Ooh. You just come out with a video that has an animation like this. Boom. Who can do this? Except three blue, one brown, and probably many other people. Now, while this was rendering, I came up with another wild idea. A while ago, I saw a video of someone creating a donut from only the code that has been used to create the donut. And it was a spinning donut. Now, there's no way I could create that donut myself. So let's see if I can do it with the help of AI. I want to create a spinning donut on the screen that's made up of all the text that's been used to code that donut and it should spin for 10 seconds wait did it happen play okay this is definitely not gonna work maybe i didn't copy it correctly wait let's zoom in on wait i don't see it anymore zoom out zoom out 64 okay i zoomed out just in time 67 boom <clears throat> almost missed it here we go is there going to be a donut oh well it kind of looks like a donut not really <laughs> I want to create a Manim animation where on the screen there's a donut spinning that's made up of all the code that's been used to make the donut. It should be a 3D scene and the donut should spin for 10 seconds. Yeah, I don't think half of this text that it's trying to make the donut from exists inside of my code. We should get something weird. Oh, well, we got a donut. It's not made up of any text. Create a 3D donut on the screen and make it transform into a sphere. How about this? <laughs> Beautiful. Here we go. Oh. Oh. Okay. Make the sphere green and the donut orange. I just can't stop playing with this. Oh, doesn't seem to be green. Doesn't seem to be orange. Increase the resolution of both the donut and the sphere to a lot. Let's see how it interprets a lot. It put in 40, 40. I don't even know what that means. It should have more of these squares now. Okay, just what if I increase this to 500? This is definitely going to take five years to render. How nice does that look? I did 150 because 500 was taking three years, but nevertheless, this looks so good. So yeah, just wanted to experiment with this and see what wizardry the AI is capable of. That's about it.